Let's go, go, go! I am becoming so pale. Wow, I'm like the same color as this wall. By the way, this wall used to be bright red. Hello, how about this background? It's actually a lot better. Shocking. Hey guys, my name is David Prater. But the times, oh, they are a changing. In this video, as you can see in the beginning, we are back to talking about my braces and I hope you're happy. More specifically, we're talking about a new thingy I got in my mouth for my braces and it's called a permanent retainer. As you can see right here, a permanent retainer is just a little thingy. It's a wire that goes across from the canine on the left side to the canine on the right side of the bottom row of teeth. I have had it for four days now, and I was just, you know, testing the water, seeing what it's like, seeing how it feels, seeing how it responds to speaking, and all of these kinds of things, so that now, right now, I could talk about it in a video and not feel completely stupid. First off, what is this for? Why do I have a permanent retainer rather than just waiting and then wearing a lower retainer? The biggest reason is just ease of use. You don't have to worry about having two different appliances that you wear each night after getting the braces off to help with retention. Retention being making sure that your teeth don't move all over the place after the braces come off. This whole process costs somewhere from five to six thousand dollars, so there's no reason that afterward they should all revert back to their original spot. And that's kind of just what the permanent retainer is. It goes on there, glued to the back of the teeth. Because most people who have braces and even abide by their retention strategy, they often find that these are the teeth that move the most after getting their braces off. And so if we can put it something permanent, like this wire back there, then we can hope that it doesn't do the exact same thing. So first, let's talk about the actual application of the retainer, the permanent retainer back there, yeah? Kinda cool, he starts out, he's playing with fire, right? He takes out this wire, and it's the same kind of arc wire that is used on the front of the teeth. However, you don't want it to bend back to its original form, otherwise it might bend the teeth and move the teeth in a way that you don't want them to. So what happens is he presses it against the back of the teeth and he makes the shape of the teeth however they are. He made a couple little curves to curve up to mimic the shape of a standard retainer on the back of the teeth. And then he heated it up with fire, right? And I asked him, why are you doing that? And he said that over time, an arc wire will naturally move back to its original position. That's what it's for. So heating it up will, what he called, relax it. It relaxes it so that it will not be forced or want to go back to this original shape in the future. The overall process itself, Kinda, it was really dry. I remember that. They put a cotton ball right there, right? Just to make sure that my lip doesn't get in the way. Then there was a bunch of blow drying on the back of the teeth. I felt like the Sahara in my mouth. Kind of uncomfortable, yeah, but uh, I, I survived. So how does it actually feel right now? How does it how does it feel in my mouth? It's kind of like whenever you first get braces and there's just something new on your teeth and you're not sure what's going on, so you keep playing with them. That's how this guy is also. I find myself very consistently flicking my tongue. Uh, not so blatantly, but uh, like I'll just be talking to somebody about that. How does it make me sound? I don't know. Sometimes the S's come out differently, and I think the F, the F sound has a bit of a tinge at the end. But nothing drastic, nothing crazy. So how long does this stay in? I am not really sure. It's called a permanent retainer. I don't know if that means you go until the end of the standard retention cycle, which is usually about two years, maybe less, maybe forever. And I, I really don't know. Maybe until your regular dentist says, hey, there's a lot of stuff going on in here that shouldn't be. Let's take this thingy off. And honestly, I might get it removed at some point. Because after I get my braces off, I don't want this other thing to care for. If I can avoid it, I don't want to have to live with this thing in my mouth forever. So how do you care for it? How do you make sure that it, it does everything properly? You brush your teeth. That's really it. You just, you, you maintain healthy brushing habits. And around those teeth, you still have to floss the same way that you do if you have braces. So you have to use an aura brush to get down into the corners rather than being able to use standard floss because now there's a wire there and it's just stuck there. Nobody can take it off really. And that's that's the biggest bummer. You still can't have a regular mouth. I have this weird thing where I want people to think I'm genetically gifted in a lot of areas of my life that I'm definitely not. So for example, once I get the braces off, I don't want to be, oh yeah, I had braces, so now my teeth are great. I want to be like, yeah, my teeth are, they, I was born with a perfect row of top and bottom teeth. I put on a lot of work to make it look like I don't put in that much work. Anyway, overall, how do I feel about this permanent retainer in my mouth? Well, you know, there's pros and cons for everything. The biggest pro being, I don't have to worry about having that second retainer that I have to wear during the retention phase 
of the oral to, to, to make my teeth pretty. And of course the con, I still have something in my mouth that I have to maintain superb oral health to make sure I don't rot. Which weirdly, I've had like calcium buildup in the back and the top of the molars, so I highly recommend always make sure that you use, I don't know actually, I don't know how I could have prevented it. I thought I had incredible, impeccable oral health, apparently not, because now I have to get that cleaned off by an actual dentist, but we'll talk about that in a future video. My next orthodontist appointment is not until January 7th, but that is my debond day. That is the day that I get my braces off and that's it. That's the big shebang. And I want to try to do that in a vlog format rather than a this thingy format. Maybe a combination of the two. I want to show you the last time that I have braces, the first time that I don't have braces, and I, of course the most important part, what am I going to eat that I'm allowed to eat without braces that I couldn't with braces. And that yields the question, do I get to eat anything that I want or is there like a break-in period where I'm not allowed to eat certain foods to make sure my teeth don't fall out of my face? And of course we're gonna talk about like retention and retainers and all that kind of stuff. Whatever, it doesn't matter because it's not right now, that's not happening right now. We'll get there in the future. I thank you for watching the video. If you liked it, please click the like button. If you wanna see more like this video, you don't have a lot of opportunities. But subscribe now to jump in while you can. If you have any questions about braces or about anything in life, leave them in the comment section down below. I'll either talk about it in another video or I will get back to you on the comment board because that's where I like to do my dirty work. Hit me up with messages if you don't feel comfortable in the comment section, that's okay. And with all that, everything, I'm gonna go. So yeah, these aren't genetics. This is hard work and money. Bye. I call this sit down comedy because I'm sitting. There's no comedy though, so I call it sitting. And with that, I'm gonna go. So, uh, yeah. Bye.